Hey everyone, this is Mihail, and today I'll be showing you how to take a Django website you have already developed locally and deploy it on Python Anywhere. First things first, I want to highlight that I'm going to be using Python version 3.6 with the Django version 2.0. I also want to explain why I did this video. I started learning Django by reading a book called Python Crash Course, which is one of the best introductions to Python. The book described how to build a fairly basic block site in Django and deploy it in Heroku. I went through the process pretty quickly, even though I didn't quite understand a few of the things I was doing for deployment. Nevertheless, I was filled with confidence and I went on to develop my own custom website a recommendation platform for mobile phones, which obviously turned out to be a lot more intricate. I then followed the same steps to deploy the site in Heroku, but it didn't work this time. I searched for solutions on Heroku's documentation, Google, Stack Overflow, Reddit, but I still couldn't make it work. I'm thinking it might have been caused by the fact I haven't built the website the right way. Maybe I didn't follow the right file structure, or there was something weird in one of my settings files. Either way, I started looking for alternative hosting providers which were suitable for beginners. The only one where I managed to get my website to work was Python Anywhere. But it still took me a while because there wasn't a single video that explained the deployment process from start to finish. So that's the story behind this video. Time to show you how I did it. I'm actually going to start off by making some preparations locally. The first thing I'm going to do is open up a command line. I need to change the directory to the folder that contains my website. This is the folder, so I will copy the location and in here I'll type in cd and control paste for the location. I then need to activate the virtual environment that was already set up locally. I will then run this command pip freeze greater than sign requirements underscore personal dot text. If I go back to the folder that holds all the code for my website, you'll see that a requirements underscore personal text file has been created. Opening this file up, you will see that it includes all of the Python packages I have installed in order to run my website locally. Notice how even Django is here, amongst many others. Later on, I'll use this file to install all of the packages on my hosting space with only one command. We can now close both the text file and the command line. The other thing I'm going to do is place the folder that holds my Django website into a single zip file. While this is running, I'll show you the dashboard you will see on Python Anywhere once you create an account. I'm using a free account which allows me to publish only one website without the ability to choose a custom domain. The size processing speed is also slower compared to the paid version, but that won't matter much at the beginning. The first thing I'm going to do here is upload my website's files once this folder here has been compressed. 
I'll click on the Files tab. And in here, I've got this Upload a File button, which I will click right now. And I will wait until the folder finishes compressing. Alright, so now that the file has been completed, the zip file that is, I will just select it, click on open, oops, just make sure that I have it selected, click on open, and wait for it to be uploaded. There you go. Now you can see it uploaded here on my server space. All right. Now I'm going to open the consoles page. And click on the bash link. Which will start a bash console in the browser, which is directly linked to my server space. I will now run the following commands mk virtual mv django 2 dash dash python equals for slash usr for slash bin for slash python 3.6. This command basically tells the console to create a virtual environment on my Python Anywhere server space using Python 3.6, which should be stored in the Django 2 folder. All right, once this has loaded up, you will see that Django 2 appears in brackets on the left hand side of the command line. This indicates that we'll now be running commands in the virtual environment we created. The next thing I'm going to do is unzip the file I uploaded on the server. First of all, I will check whether the file is in my active directory by typing in there. There it is. Okay, and now I will type unzip p recommend dot zip to decompress the file. While this is running, I'll switch to another tab that has the Python Anywhere website open. And go to the web section of the site. I can create a website here by clicking on the add a new web app button. I'll click this time on next. Click on manual configuration because we'll be using the virtual environment we set up using the bash console. And Python 3.6. Right, so I'll click on the reload button here to make sure that my website has been loaded up. And if I open the link in a new tab, you'll see that a generic website or web page really has been created. All right. I will then scroll down to the virtual NV section, 
where I type in the name of the folder that holds my virtual environment. That is Django 2.0 and click on accept. This tells the website to use the virtual environment I created on my server space. Okay, I'll go back to the bash console I have open in my browser and hopefully the unzipping should be completed. I'm now going to use the text file I created at the beginning of this video. Let me first check where I am by typing in there. And then change the directory to the precommend folder. Let's again first see what files are in the precommend folder. And you can see now the requirements underscore personal text file in my active directory. If I then run the following command, pip install dash r requirements underscore personal dot text. It will start installing all of the Python packages that I had on my local server, including Django, using the requirements underscore personal text file. I'll switch back to the web page on Python anywhere while this is running. And I'll open up the WSGI configuration file And in this file here, I will delete all of the settings which are not relevant to my Django 2.0 website. The Hello World section, up until Django, won't be of any use anymore, so I'll delete it. Just as an aside, the Hello World section contains what was being showed in that generic web, set, web page when I started my web app. I will now uncomment all of the commands starting from this section here up until this section where it starts saying all oh, for older Django 1.4. So I will uncomment import OS, import sys, path, if path, sys.path, os.environ, from Django, and application. The only other thing we have below is settings for Flask, which I can, which means that I can delete everything starting from Django one point four. Doesn't it feel good when you delete large blocks of code? Maybe I'm just going crazy. Anyway, what we also need to do is make sure that these two variables here, path and os.environs point to the right locations. Let's first have a look at the folder structure of our website. If I open a new tab and I go into files and then I go into p recommend which holds all of my website's files. You'll see how it's being split up.
Okay, so what this means is that in the path, I need to put in the name of the folder that holds my website's files. In this case, it's p-recommend, and that's what I'm going to type in here. The os.environment variable, on the other hand, needs to be linked to the folder that holds the project settings. In the, my case, the name of the folder is Rico Project. You can see here, for example, my settings.py file. So it is the name of this folder that I will type in here instead of my site. All right, we're now done with this file. We'll save our changes. And now actually go to our settings.py file. The only thing I'm going to change here is the value of the allowed hosts variable which should be the star character between two apostrophes. This basically allows our website's files to be accessed by any hosting provider, including Python Anywhere. I'm not going to be making any more changes to the file, but let's go to the bottom so I can show you something. This section here contains code that I have added when developing my website locally. If you haven't defined your static root path already, make sure you do that now, because this is the path where all of your files like JavaScript or CSS will be collected when we run the static files command in a moment. You can use what I have here, which is the path to a static files folder within the base directory. Now, if you're wondering where this base underscore dir variable comes from, we'll scroll back up and you'll see it here defined. As, and you'll see that it points to the folder where we store all of our website's files. You don't actually need to create the static files folder, by the way. It will be done automatically when we run the static files command. All right then, enough talk about this command and let's actually use it. I'll go back to the bash console I have open and hopefully all of the Python packages should have been installed. Great. So now what I will do is type in python manage.py collect static. The command will read our instructions in settings.py and collect all of the static files in the static files folder. If we go back into one of the pages that we had open on Python Anywhere and make sure again that I click on the save button and go into files and into the p recommend folder which holds my websites, you'll now see the static files folder 
created here. And indeed, the static files folder contains static files like JavaScript or CSS inside. I'll also make sure, back in the settings file, that I have saved this file here. And then I'll go to the web section. Where in turn I'll scroll down to the static files subsection. There you go. What I'll first do is type in static between two forward slashes in the URL column. Then I'll copy the directory of the static files folder from the files page you have open into the directory column. So I'll copy this part here and paste it in the directory. The purpose of this is to help Python Anywhere serve your static files faster on your website. Okay, I will hit the reload button one last time. Wait for everything to load up. And if I open the link again, I should now see the website I have created locally initially now running on the Python Anywhere host. There you have it. So that's it folks. Let me know in the comment box what you think of this video or if you have suggestions for any other videos. And see you next time.